Good day, everybody. Here we are on the Bible in a Year 2021, day 68. And we are reading through Numbers 33 and 34. We're getting very close to finishing off Numbers. Isn't that exciting? So let's get right into this. Um, this whole section right here, the first the section, is a, a really, it's a fantastic summary of the travels of Israel. It just starts off, these are were the stages by which the Israelites marched when they left the land of Egypt, according to the military units under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. Uh, so what, what, um, what happens, it's so far in, this, in the storytelling, in the relaying of the events, uh, we don't really get a picture of, of how often they've actually moved around. And, and here we see in the last 40 years, all the different locations that they, they've gone to. And it, it gives us a, a good overview, um, a better one shot kind of picture of, of what that might have looked like. We also see here, um, according to the military units under the leadership of Moses and Aaron, we, we emphasize a lot about Moses, uh, but we see here, and it's mentioned in many places, we just don't necessarily take note of it because um, we're just fixated on, on Moses. We think kind of like Aaron's this afterthought, but here we get to see how Yahweh and, and Israel uh, saw it, how they saw the leadership. And it, it's definitely um, a duo. Um, Moses is obviously in the position that he's in, uh, but Aaron is right there. And, and we know that from, from the beginning because Moses um, didn't want to do this. He, uh, he didn't want to. And, and so the Lord assigned his older brother to him. And, and he said, you will be like um, God to Aaron. Um, so he, he is the one who told Aaron what to say, and Aaron spoke at least in, in the beginning years. Um, and, then, and then we see um, the, the priesthood is awarded to, to Aaron. And it's interesting because nothing of Moses continues. That position of Moses does not continue. There's, his children don't inherit anything. Like his children don't become anything. And Aaron's children continued on the priesthood. The whole, all, all the priests trace back to Aaron himself. That's quite something when you think about it. No trace of Moses is left. But the, the priesthood, the existence of the priesthood, demonstrated the, the ongoing existence of Aaron's family. Hmm. Okay. So then we're going to jump down to the verse 38 here, and just because it, it does give us a timeline. Um, with everything in, in, the, in the Bible, in the scriptures, uh, unless they give us some kind of reference, we have no idea of the passage of time. Uh, and it, it can seem just like a blink. We don't realize how long it took. Now, you, you might be struggling to read through all the details of all these books uh, that seem that seem to be unrelated to you. And it, it can seem like an eternity just to get through them. Um, but it, it, it really um, reads very quickly, considering that we are talking about a 40 year history here. Now we still have uh, one, uh, the last book of the uh, Pentateuch, we still have that to look. So these are the first five books that um, are no. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Just scrap that. Okay, uh, anyway, we're 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 going on to a book that's going to give us a lot more detail. Okay, a lot more detail, um, and we'll talk about the Pentateuch. I don't want to get into that. That's the only reason I say scrap is because I don't want to get into that right now. We're, we'll get we'll talk more about that when we get into um, the last book that Moses wrote, um, and 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 so it's here. Like we're we're seeing we're seeing all of it. The, the, the last book is going to fill in a lot of the details, but this has given us an overall history of what has taken place. And and so we see here Aaron the priest in verse 38, Aaron the priest descended Mount Hor at the Lord's command, and he died. 
there in the 14th year, sorry, in the 40th year, 14th year, in the 40th year, on the first day of the fifth month after the Israelites left the land of Egypt. So 40 years and five months. 40 years and five months. That's the history we've been looking at. 40 years and five months. So it gives us a sense of that, that timeline. Um, and, and then we, we have um, just things being organized because this is Moses who has really, uh, he has set up the whole structure of Israel here. He's, he's about to leave. Aaron, Aaron's gone. Moses is about to leave. So like these last, last little bit is just going over the structure again, making sure everything's in its place and, and really dealing with the next, next chapter, setting it up for Joshua to take over, making sure the instructions are clear. So the instructions from the Lord, and this is from Lord, uh, from the Lord, the, uh, Yahweh is telling Moses this to give to the, to the people and listen to what the responsibilities are. You will drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you. The inhabitants of the land that they're moving into are the, are the Canaanites. Okay, the various nations of the Canaanites, the seven nations of the Canaanites. They, they have the responsibility of driving them out. Okay, if they've lost uh, possession of the land, Yahweh is moving them out. Okay, by way of death. <laughs> so he's moving them out. And okay, so that's that's one. Drive them out. Second, you will destroy all their carved figures. Okay, all the idols have to be destroyed. You don't hold on to anything. A lot of the times when a when a people would come in and conquer, they they would take on the idols of the people that they conquered. Crazy, but that's that's what they did. Um, but he's he's forbidding them. You will not do that. You will also destroy all their cast images. Okay, they're just more more of the, the idols, you will eliminate all their shrines. Not even just big temples, all their shrines. The shrines are usually on the high places. Um, I, I know that um, Christians have this idea that we have to go up on the high places um, to possess. That's, that's an, that, that is idolatry. Uh, idolatry. idolatry. Um, thinking. It's an idolatrous thinking. Uh, that's that's what people do. We we worship the Lord wherever, in the high and the low, in the in between. Uh, we're not like that. And, and in fact, um, Israel got in trouble because of the high places. Um, uh, they uh, at first when they went in, they they took on the routine, they took on the the habit of the nations that they were replacing, and they they were worshiping Yahweh but in high places, but in places where idols had been worshipped. And, uh, you know, Yahweh didn't like that whatsoever. Uh, there was a, a place that was supposed to be established. Um, and you, you could have a, a local um, worship, but you were supposed to, you were supposed to go to that place, that, that uh, tent of meeting. Now they're supposed to be gathering there and celebrations were, were supposed to be had there. Um, but no, they, they were supposed to get rid of all the shrines. That's okay. So you, you see here, drive them out, destroy the carved images, destroy the cast images, uh, eliminate um, all the shrines. So this, this was the big problem. And this was the pinnacle of evil that had happened. It wasn't what people were doing to each other. It was their, um, their relationship with Yahweh. It, it was what they were doing in the names of, of non-existing gods. Um, so he wants to wipe this completely out. Now there's a benefit. There's a benefit for their obedience uh, for doing this, for casting the people out, for getting rid of the idols, the, all, all that, that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, in, in verse 53, you will take possession of the land and live in it because I've given the land to you to possess. So this is the benefit. Okay. The, the responsibility was to do those things, but the benefit they were being given is that they would get to possess the land. Notice it's not that they would get to own the land. Uh, Yahweh makes it clear that all the land belongs to him, that they are tenants, that he has lent them the land. 
uh, but it still belongs to him. All land, all territory, all of creation belongs to him. These bodies belong to him. Everything belongs to him. And, and we need to get our mind to that place. So in, in uh, verse 55, there is a, a warning is given uh, about the consequences to follow through on this responsibility, to follow through. This is the covenant that they've entered into. This is the whole reason why he, he, he raised them up was for this purpose of driving out, destroying these people, driving them, get rid of uh, all that terrible worship, the terrible stuff that they were doing in the, in the name of false religion. Uh, he wanted to wipe out. So there would, there would be consequences uh, if they failed to do this. And so verse 55, but if you don't drive out the inhabitants of the land before you, then those you allow to remain will prick your eyes and be thorns in your side. This is like a curse that is, is being pronounced on them. They will harass you in the land in which you are living. It, it, it goes on, but like you get the idea. It is not going to go well for you. It, it is not going to go well for you. If you leave them there, man, they will be a curse on you. And then our very organized Yahweh, our very organized father, um, gives them this. Command the Israelites and say to them, this is in chapter 34, verse 2. Command the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land of Canaan, this is the land that will fall to you as an inheritance, the land of Canaan, according to its boundaries. Uh, it is, <laughs> okay, so so he, he it's very detailed, isn't it? You, you, you're probably totally lost because you're not familiar with any of this. If you, if you can get... Um, a map of of ancient of, of this time period, uh, you, you can follow it. You can see uh, what area that they were supposed to have, and if you do that, you will discover that Israel never came close to possessing the full territory Yahweh told them to possess. They didn't do it. They didn't move into all the land. But remember what he said he was going to do. He was going to get them to do it bit by bit. Because if they went in and they wiped everybody out all in the same week, uh, then the land would become possessed by wild animals. Uh, and that would be very difficult for them because there were, there were lions and, and bears and all kinds of things um, that would end up being a headache for them. Uh, so it, it wasn't a matter of this was supposed to happen quickly. But regardless, they, they never did take full possession of, of the land, even during Solomon's time, didn't take possession of the land. Uh, that, that had been given to them. And, and we see um, here in verse 13 that there's only nine and a half tribes that are going to take possession of this land. Two and a half tribes have chosen the lesser land in which they were in, and Yahweh allowed them to do that. There, you know, there is, there's, there's a difference between um, the permissible will of God and and uh, and and his will. There's there's things that he will allow, and there's things that he wants. Okay, and there there are some things that some things that he will allow, because it, it it won't go against his plan. It's lesser. It's less th than what he wants for people, um, but it, it he will allow it because it doesn't take away from his plan. And so that's what he's done here is, is he's allowing the two and a half tribes to settle outside of um, the land that he had intended for them. They ended up settling in the, um, in the land of, uh, of the, the Midianites and instead of the Canaanites. Uh, but they had given promises that they would still go and they would fight for their brothers and sisters. They'll still cross the Jordan and enter that place and fight until Israel... Um, had possessed what was promised to them. So, so we see here, Moses commanded the Israelites, this is the land that you will inherit by lot, which the Lord has commanded to give to the nine and a half tribes. And, and I love this. I, I love this because we, we, listen, I'm a, sometimes I love being a, a um, just, you know, go by the seat of my pants type of thing, just as it flows, as it, as it goes. Um, it's a lot less work, um, a lot less preparation, 
Um, I'm not I'm not the keenest on on organization preparation and and, and all that sort of stuff. Some of you may understand that. Um, but our father is. Come on, the cross was planned for a very long time. And, uh, and everything had to be positioned for that time. That, that was a lot of planning. And we see, and all the way through, how we structured Israel um, through Moses. He structured Israel. We can see that he plans. And we see here, look at this. I come from a place of committees. You got to understand that. This is funny for me. The Lord assigned the, the, the land possession committee. Okay, he, I mean, you can come up with a better title uh, than that, but it, it, it's a, a committee nonetheless. In verse 16, 17, it's more than that, but just highlighting it with this. The Lord spoke to Moses. These are the names of the men uh, who will assign the inheritance of the land. Eleazar, the priest, and Joshua, Nun's son. And then, and then he says, and you will, you will select the, the tribal leaders, one from each tribe. And then he names he names the tribal leaders that are to be on, on this committee. And, and this committee will be responsible for, for making sure that this land is divided up by, by lots and according to size of tribes. So I just, I love that. I, I love that. You know, it's, uh, he, he is a God of order. It's, it's as simple as that. So that's what we're going to deal with today. And, uh, and then we get to see some interesting stuff tomorrow. And then we'll be on to other things. Yeah. So you guys are doing well. Very proud of you. You guys be blessed. Be encouraged. You're learning lots. Uh, and I'm, I, I pray that the, you, the Lord is using this for you to be growing in intimacy with him. Because if not, it's a waste of time. This is all about growing in him. Thanks for being on the journey, guys. God bless.